Okay, uh, today what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding a, uh, a uninterruptible power supply monitoring software to my Webman and uh, we'll walk you through that pretty soon. Uh, just one thing that I wanted to add in here uh, from the Webman website you'll see up near the top that they have a tab for documentation. Okay. Once you're in the documentation area, you can uh, find a lot of things that you'd need to know while you're using your Webman in the module documentation pages. So uh, you go in here and you look for certain information on specific things that you want to work on and it's, it's in the same order as things are over here. So. Uh, except that sometimes the unused modules like Bacula backup system is listed, but that's where it would be in the system after you install it. But it's, it's organized in the same order as this is. So a uh, great place to go and find all kinds of information that you need to, to know about operating the modules within how to do things, what to do, what not to do. Okay, so that's that side of uh, side topic there. Okay, so um, this this Ubuntu page uh, I have listed like if, above this video in the page that this video appears. Um, I have this page as a hyperlink for you to just to be handy. Um, so there's a few things that got to get done. Uh, while you're installing this, uh, you've got to put on some packages, run a few things, test some stuff, edit uh, config files. Um, so instead of opening a shell or a terminal window, I'm going to do this through the Webman interface. Um, just for uh, just for grins and giggles though, uh, there's two different ways to, you, you can open a terminal window from the operating system you're on, but the, the uh, there is also uh, two ways to get a shell window through Webman. Now, this is the Chrome browser, so it's not running Java, but that SSH login would open you up a little black window app here that would it be essentially the same as a terminal window on any operating system. So that's that's one way to get to it. Um, if I was in Firefox, you would see that window open up. There's also the text login, which this looks very similar to that SSH login. Um, so this one has a couple of handy things, like you can open it in a separate window instead of so you can be doing operations over here in webmen while you're doing operations over here in the terminal window that's two ways to get uh, commands into your server uh, another way is these two sections here custom commands and command shell if you find yourself doing uh, the same command over and over again on your server for some reason you're going to want to create a, a new custom command and build it, uh, build it so that uh, if there's any changing inputs every time that you can just alter them. Like if you've got the same command that you're doing once a week, but you change a date or, uh, or a file name parameter, that's the section that you want to be in. And in Webman, there's always the help sections available that get you to things. Uh, often there's a man page that uh, that that you can find uh, for these specific things. So command shell, this is this is basically a spot where you can run these type of commands and just have them execute as if you were in a terminal window. 
So if it's something small and easy like this where you're just plopping on a piece of software, you can go ahead and execute the command right there. Um, although the this command line is good for so many more things than installing and uninstalling. I want to show you one last thing here. Uh, as I had mentioned before, there's there's a place uh, here where you see package, all packages are up to date. This software pack, that hyperlink is actually the same as software package updates. So those are the same places. Software packages, uh, we've got a variety of places to look for a specific package. So uh, apt is one of the places that we're always going for things. So let's, let's go into apt and we're going to look for just that, that program name. So let's see what apt got for us. So you see you've got all these different uh, app, APC packages come up. My personal uninterruptible power supply is uh, an American power company, I think they're called, APC. Uh, and it's a two, uh, 2200 is the model. So. so yes, we have it where we can use uh, like a no commands, no sudo apt get install. Oh, this is very sidetracky, but because your webman, your webman is essentially logged in as root when you sign into it, you really don't need sudo in your commands. The apt get install would have been enough back over in your in your other section. When, when we were in command shell. We could have just put in, uh, we could have just put in the app get minus by install APS UPSD. So, um, so back to what I was doing. So I was in software packages. Let's see if this comes back right. So I want to pick this APS UPSD and I believe this is going to be something that we install later. I'm bad at memorizing things, but there it is. APC UPSD CGI. So we're going to put that on later, but let's go ahead and put that on. Oh, it lost. It, it lost the connection, I think, because I switched the window. So search A P C again and A P C. Oh, that was funny. Okay, so boom, it writes it back into the page you're on after you find it. You click that because you want it to do this. You want to install a new package from there, and boom. While we're on the page, this this spot here is a place where you would go to do maintenance, like uninstallation of software. But really be sure, see how it ran the command app get minus y install uh, f for fix things if there's something awry make sure you fix them and then install it. Oh look at that it put the uh, it's got the suggested packages right there. Oftentimes when you do an install you'll see that suggested packages not it's not always a great thing to throw those on but uh, sometimes it is. So mind mind the notations that come in when your install is running. Uh, so we're getting the daemon. The D is for daemon. I don't know why we picked that word for a program that listens and takes care of things. And then your doc is your, you know, how this thing works and how to how to work on it. Okay, so we're we're done with that one. We can return to the module index. Now, uh, you'll see here, this is, uh, I mentioned this before, it's kind of par for the course. Uh, a lot of times your, your instructions from people that are very professional will tell you to immediately make a backup file of your 
configuration file before you alter it because if you mess it up with a typo or something it's very easy to just copy this backup one back over the top of the original that the live configuration file and then uh, start again so so that's a great idea to do uh, in my case however I happen to already have the configuration file that that I was using when the server was running before so I'm just going to copy and paste the whole file into the into the one so so instead of running this app uh, copying the file I want to show you how things can be done over here in Webman so one of your others programs is a file manager and this file manager has so many handy things up top here it's just you can live in here you don't you can uh, run backups and on file systems and whatnot uh, all your typical operations that you want to do moving things deleting and so forth is all available right in here there's only one quirky thing that that I don't like about it that makes a line command like that so much better is that if you copy a file and then try and paste it into the same directory it's not going to let you because it, it there's already something there with the name and for some reason this interface doesn't ask you if you want to paste it as a different name so so let's go ahead. So you, this this file that it's looking for is in etc. And then it's in the APS UPSD subfolder. And then it's the configuration file that we want to work on. So here's your configuration file right here. So this is how you make a copy. Copy it. And then I'll show you, I'm going to paste it here, and it's like, ah, file errors, cannot do that. So all we have to do is uh, jump up one directory, and say, paste, and then go and grab that brand new file that we pasted. Oh, this is a terrible place to have put it. There's so many subfolders. Okay, so let's rename this right while we're here so that when I move it back to dot back, rename. So that file, where were we, third, third row? Yeah, okay, so that file there is now going to get moved cut it from here, go into UPSD, and now we can paste it. The, a trick that I've tried before in Webman was to do the copy operation and then do a rename operation and then do a paste operation, but that did not work. For some reason, the rename com command makes it forget that you click the copy operation. So for some reason that's that's just not doable in this interface. So, but here we are. So we've got this file and the backup file. So right in here, instead of going in and doing sudo nano to edit this file, we just click the pencil here in Webman. That file comes open. I'm going to go in here into a different window that I got control A, copy, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to control A and V. And there. Now my my configuration file, the way I liked it, is, is in there. On the web page of that I posted this video to, right below, I've got what those files were both before and after and I highlighted the differences so that you could see what the differences were like uh, UPS type and device is it has been changed from the original to here um, there's about it's basically these changes that that Ubuntu suggested and I feel like I might have done a couple of more uh, but I, I can't remember exactly I they're like uh, oh I, I 
never mind. No, I, I left those as is. Okay, so so the save is way at the bottom past it. So you got save or save and close. Which, if you're tweaking, you're manually tweaking web pages, this save is kind of handy because you can click save, test it, change it, save, test it, change it, save, test, change it. Uh, we're done here though. All right, so we've effectually, effectively finished this portion here, this portion here. Um, this this one we're going to do now. So that's uh, it. Default. And APS UPSD. We're making a backup file for this one. So copy. Grub D is probably kind of empty. So let's paste it in here. directory and paste it in here and then we want to edit the daemon and change no to yes Ta -da. okay so he this type of thing here, this command, that's what we want to use in the command shell. So let's go over to command shell, paste that one in, execute the command. I remember this, this happening before. Um, where it said connection refused. This, uh, I always remember these instructions being a little quirky, but they went, they work in the end. So system control stop APS UPSD. Let's see if we can do this without a command. Boot up and shut down APC UPSD. We've got start at boot, but it's not running now. So you can't shut it down because it's not running yet. So, so let's go ahead here and run it and then retry that command. Let's start that service. Done. Okay. So that command that we just did a little while ago, it's is in the the memorized list so that's another handy thing about using this command shell uh, just like in if you're uh, if you use a terminal window typically up arrow key will scroll through your last commands that you've done and this similarly remembers uh, commands that you've done with it so I can click edit previous it'll throw that up here and then I can change it and execute the new one, or I can execute whatever one is in this drop down box. So, boom, let's see how we go. There we go. So now we get our, act, our status shows similar to what you would expect over here. So, so we're looking good. So I could run the sudo system control stop APAC UPSD, but instead I'm going to go in here, APS UPSD. Oh, that's funny. Running now. It is running now. I wonder if uh, that screen's got to refresh. So let's let's go ahead and stop it. Done. back to our command shell because we're gonna we're gonna run the test and I think it's probably obvious that these tests are just to make sure that things are going right for you but um, 
they're basically working right. Still waiting for that command to get a response. Oh shit. You know what? This is, I, I had just talked about this at the start of the video and I forgot it myself. The, the sudo, I didn't need to put the sudo in when he said sudo. That command asked me for my password, but I'm not there to answer it. So let's, uh, let's see if it forgets that one. Let's put it in again. Let's just execute that. There you go. So, uh, yeah, you're always logged in as, as root admin when you're using the webmin interface. Okay, so, yeah, looks good to me. And then, oh, wait a minute. the following. In order to APC test first stop, otherwise one might see the following error. So, apparently it did not Stop APC UPSD and then let's try the test again. Still there. You know what I think I remember? These uh, this lock file and you look read UPS lock file. Um, I, I know this thing works even though I'm running into that. <sighs> I cannot getting UPS I cannot remember why this this was going like that, but I, I know the thing is working right, so we're just going to put this CGI program on. So over to software packages, we'll do the search again. Uh, a partial search also works for for these things, so a few letters search and you'll get a huge list. So we're putting on that. Check, install it. So yeah, so you've got these the common gateway interface for your UPS daemon, and uh, you got your instructions here from them about how to do it with Apache, how to do it with Webmin. I'm showing you a different way to do it with Webmin. Um, so that'll be the last thing that we do here is copying over those files after it's done. Do, 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 do. Install is complete. Return to module index. We want to go into file manager now because we're doing a copy operation. So, so we want to go dig into user lib CGI bin APC UPSD. So user element OP user Was it lib or bin? Lib. Common gateway interface. I am so bad with the alphabet. I don't know if anybody else is with me on that one, but uh, back me up if you do. All right, so they're all CGI. So this this star dot CGI. 
that would copy only the ones that were ending with the CGI uh, uh, file extension. If this was filled with other things, then um, it would this copy operation would ignore them. So we're going to copy that set of four, and then we want to move over to it set APS UPSD. So we're going back to the root it set. UPSD, and we're just going to drop them in. Boom. So you got your CGA files are in there. Log in a webman. Okay, so what we want to do is refresh modules. Oh, 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 this is a. Okay, so uh, I forget, but I think that, that the. Okay, the. The clickable thing here, the, I forget where it appears, but the, the clickable thing to check the status of that, that uh, uninterruptible power supply is, okay, so copy this link, copy. It's uh, something that you've got to stick in with the web and interface. So we're going, so we're configuration, webman modules, and then um, we're adding from a third party. So local file, blah, 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 third party. You could search around in uh, for that, but we've, we've got the URL already. So we're doing that, uh, let me see. Install modules. We don't want to ignore dependencies usually. <clears throat> and check signature. You should always do this, but I don't know if that's signed software. But uh, <clears throat> generally, your signature is testing to make sure that the software that you're installing wasn't say uh yeah there we go because they uh those guys didn't sign it all right so third party all right we'll just leave it the um if your if your open source developer is kind enough to sign their files that means that when you install them you will know that it actually came from them and it wasn't some uh, Russian or American or British or French spy company that built the software and put it on there for you to download thinking that it was actually from the, the producer. So, okay, so the uh, notice the category is in others and that's the name of it. So. Webman is also very polite about hyperlinking things, like to get you quickly to stuff. So we can jump to others and get to this, or we could just go to the APC UPS daemon. So that should jump to it. And uh, let's see. system to get that that machinery to work right so yeah it definitely was a reboot okay so uh, we need to we need to reboot the system I, I, I vaguely remember this the I kept trying different things I was editing config files and tweaking around and tweaking around but there, there's just something 
with uh, with these instructions that aren't aren't modernized. I don't know when these were posted. Let's see if there's a date. Yeah, I don't know how old these instructions are, uh, but like I said before, they do work. And I found these instructions much better than uh, the actual company that makes it. Uh, I didn't find their their uh, them to be helpful with any of this. So a few minutes from now, we're gonna be back in and. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, there's something that went on where an update, uh, some sort of an update is making the, the server forget its own uh, server name, the, the host name. So So when I hit the IP address of my webmin, run my machine running webmin, I get there. But for some reason, the host name doesn't work anymore. So uh, I'm not sure why that's going on. But uh, now we're at the end here. You can see that if you followed all the instructions here, except that uh, in the instructions, please remember that. Uh, at this point, status, that works fine. But then this here, they tell you to system control stop um, and then do this APC test. And I think that's an error. I think you, you want to skip this command right here. Don't stop it. Just run APC test and you'll get this message and then skip this command also because you never stopped it so you don't have to restart it and then proceed from here on down so so go ahead follow this instruction um, do your install of the CGI uh, copy across the file from one place to another the four files and then uh, put that module in and and it doesn't say it down here but for me there was a reboot at the end that had to be done so so yeah so you get to monitor your your APC and you get to adjust things uh, as needed there's uh, there's I forget where I did it but there was also some other things where I could do like if if users were logged in I can pass them a message that says system is going down for maintenance I forget I think it's in the, uh, the that text file that I copied and pasted across but where I can send messages out to people as the uh, is uh, like a power failures going on and or test so so that they they know that they better log out in a hurry because we're going down. So um, that's it for APC right now. Oh, what else was in there? What do we got here? Battery capacity. Oh, look at that voltage. About line voltage. Interesting. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not what I wanted. Kelvin, that would be fun for geeks. 
Okay, so because I'm in America and we don't use real numbers like the metric system, I'm switching mine over to, to uh, oh, it's still in centigrade here. Okay, so uh, that's it. Okay, as usual, Google to the rescue. I used to be a book type person, but uh, some younger co-workers once taught me to just Google the error. So I Googled can't run web, webmen with hostname, have to use IP address. And I tried a couple of things. This one said, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you jump to the IP access control in the webmen configuration? So I went over to webmen, configuration, IP access control, and I discovered that this radio button had been turned off. So some software, something I, I did, I'm not positive why, but it did not resolve the host name on every request. And that caused it to no longer do the thing right. So, um, and this is interesting because just like your, your firewall settings, you can set up your webmin to only answer from certain addresses and so forth. So uh, we resolve hostname on every request. It restarts the webmin server because of the changes that occurred. And let's see what happens here. So we got that back again. We got that back again, so we're all good. Um, and uh, while we're in here, the, uh, let's see, where was it? I don't think it was, uh, it's not that one, was it? Yeah, here it is. Uh, before I said that you could change your webmin, I think in the first video, I said you don't have to listen on port 10,000, you can alter your ports. And uh, note this second line that's in here, this is a common thing with webmin. Uh, when you see something like that, or you see where there's only one line, and you think, but I want to add five things, what happens is as you make the first one, the second row appears, and so on, so it'll just grow. Um, so, so if you need to change your port number, that's the place to do it, and uh, I guess that's the end of this addendum video.